have you seen what you can make using two-part epoxy? During this epoxy project, we're going to show you the advanced techniques that we did that are easy to learn. We're going to show you step-by-step step how we mimicked and replicated high-end exotic stone. We're going to use metallic additives. We use clear epoxy, we use different colors, we use our hands, and we have a blast. To achieve these results, we apply different layers using different techniques on top of each other one by one to build out this process and project. Working with Stone Coat Countertop products is fun. These products are easy to use, do-it-yourself friendly, eco-friendly, and your results can be outstanding. You can renew your old countertops tabletops, desktops, and more. Watch right now how we push the limits on our project. Using contrasting colors and simple tools, you'll make your project pop. Moving the colored epoxy while in liquid form mimics what Mother Nature has already perfected. We're gonna show you how to achieve the perfect tone. You could enhance and contrast, you can crackle and fracture, you can do any effect that you want in the perfect spot for your project. Watch how we use a heat gun to move veins and we skip trowel over our metallics to create that iridescent finish. We're gonna use epoxy that's already started to set up on purpose to create complex looking effects. We're gonna use plastic sheeting to create a realistic looking stone finish. Find out why contractors, designers, artists, and woodworkers all love using epoxy to enhance their projects. Learn right now how to finish your next project to perfection. We are thrilled at the depth that we achieved building this project. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Okay, let's go over some of the colors we're gonna use in this project. We're gonna use black, navy blue, ocean mist, cobalt blue, seaside, sage green, and gold metallic. We're also gonna use our metallic spray. We've taken our Stone Coat Countertop metallic additive. We've put it in isopropyl alcohol and we mixed the two together. We did half a bag to eight ounces of alcohol and that creates a really cool mixture that we'll use later on in this project. We're also going to use of our metallic colors, the purple mountain metallic, the violet pearl metallic, and our blue earth metallic. Then we're gonna go to our black base tint. We're gonna create a little bit of mixture of that and we're gonna have a blast. Let's get started. In this project, we're going to create a unique surface using multiple different fun techniques. We hope you enjoy the process. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna fog a little bit of spray paint. Remember, safety first. By fogging spray paint over my painted surface, I'm going to create a backdrop or an undertone that will complement my project. Okay, that was the navy blue. Let's spray some cobalt blue. Okay, here's some of that gold rush. All right, I wanna do a little bit of that sage green. Oh. <laughs> Sage green, here we go. Let's add a little bit more blue just, just to overlap some of this color effect. Let's spray a touch more of that cobalt. So clean your tip. What do you think, Chris? You think that looks good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I dig it. It's a little metallic, I see that. It really helps if you put your lids back on because you know exactly what you're dealing with. When you pop the lid off and you're working fast, it's hard to remember what's what. I'm guilty of grabbing the wrong color and putting in a happy accident every now and again. Keep that in mind, that's a pro tip. <laughs> okay, now that we're done with the spray paint, I'm gonna put my safety gear aside. Hey Mike, I got some more sage green for you. Nice, thank you. We're saved.
Okay, I'm gonna mix up our normal stone coat countertop epoxy. I'm gonna do it in clear, and then we're gonna make separate reservoirs or cups full of our clear epoxy, and we'll use those for our different additives. We're gonna use a combination of our metallic additives, our base tints, as well as spray paint to create this custom Labradorite granite replication of stone. Is that how you say all that? Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, we're gonna use our clear epoxy cups. We're gonna add additives as we wish to create custom colors for this piece. We're gonna keep our colors slightly segregated, then we'll bring them together to create the finished look. I really like this cobalt blue. It's got a metallic tinge to it, and I wanna create more of a translucent blue that we're gonna put on top. Keep in mind these undertones aren't going to jump out at me. They're not really my finished counter. That's why I'm pretty nonchalant about getting them on the surface. But by adding those undertones, anything that opens up where you do see to the bottom, you got visual interest. That's why layers are always better than plain Jane. Oh, that is cool. That is really, really, really pretty. So I'm gonna do a combination of this and clear and maybe a little bit of black into that as my base. All right, here we go. Let's start pouring this out. And I'm actually just gonna rub these joints out here just like this. Beautiful. We're gonna do a touch of navy in one of these. So I'm gonna take some more of my clear, pour it out, shake up that navy a little bit. We're gonna spray some navy in this little amount of clear. Now you can see this will be a lot different and more opaque than that metallic was. So it'll give us a little different look. So let's fill in some of the other space with that navy. So I'm gonna rub that out. Oh yeah, that's good. That's a good, a good mixture. It's not totally different, but you can see that there's gonna be highs and lows. And that's what you get in natural stone quite often is, is these high and low points. And we're gonna do our grain flow this way, so that's why I'm bringing my, my grain flow that way with, with everything I'm putting in. Oh, I like that look a lot too, goodness. What do you like better, the metallic or the navy? Let us know in the comments below. So far, would you rather tint it with dark navy or the metallic blue? Let us know what you think in the comments below. I'm gonna mix a little bit of gold because I got some gold in this uh, and, and, and a little sage green, but I'm gonna keep the sage green to a minimum and I'm gonna go for gold right now. What do you think, Chris? That's gonna be rich. That's gonna be good contrast. Yeah, I mean, you can see these gold undertones. I like that blue going over it and this is just fun, and, and as you can tell, being free and loose about what you're doing is good. I like having clear plastic cups because you get to see the true nature of the color as opposed to a foggy, milky white plastic cup. You don't see it as much. So on these mixing containers, you don't get that true nature of what it's gonna look like. A crystal clear cup, perfect. Walmart, baby. <laughs> Okay guys, good pro tip here. We're mixing up three ounces per square foot of our project. We're applying a lot of this randomly. Normally, we'll use our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel, but because we're adding so many undertones, it's slightly different. So be sure that you mix your material very well so you don't have sticky spots and budget for about three ounces per square foot. But also keep in mind, the more I build my color, it's gonna level out. So you might start with a small skinny line, but if you have too much epoxy, it's gonna balloon out. So as you work your samples, if that's what's happening, it's because you have a little too much epoxy on the surface. This is another one of those metallic colors, and I just love the effects that you get 
from using that spray paint directly into the materials. Okay, so let's fill in some of these dry spots here. Gold up here because we got a lot of gold here. Let's just drop the cup right there. I'm gonna rub this out here. You know what else I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go and fog a little bit of sage green and a little bit of gold because it's gonna react slightly and give me some undertones too. First, start with that sage green. Okay, here we go. Okay, now that sage green is gonna act a lot different than a metallic. A metallic is gonna react substantially different on this clear epoxy than a more of an opaque, normal spray paint will. We get asked all the time, well, why do you just use Rust-Oleum? Well, it's because we've had great success with Rust-Oleum and sometimes using other brands like Krylon or some of the uh, Duplicolor or the lacquer-based um, spray paints just don't have a propellant that likes our epoxy. It'll, it'll not set up right. So that's why we do. We don't get paid from Rust-Oleum. I wish we did. <laughs> Check this out. This is a great representation. So I fogged a little color here and I don't like that it looks like almost a mistake. So I'm just gonna move it with my hand and look at the undertone that you get because that spray paint is sitting on the surface. So it's giving me really cool, really cool undertones. So let's try that with this gold. I'm gonna spray this gold heavily in the surface right here. Now if you come here and watch what I do with my hand, it's gonna give me a really cool undertone there. This is looking fun, man, I, I like this. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some black. Let's just use our blue cup, pour some of that epoxy in there. We'll mix that up. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna create some sections of this stone that appear almost obsidian or almost like segregated in black and we'll bring some tones into that, but I'm gonna just create some real segregated areas right now. Okay, now I'm going to do some runs, like some drips with the paint stick of black lines going up and down this piece to give a, another layer. Now that I got my big blobs in, I can use the rest of this to create fractured lines. I like that. All right, put another blob maybe right, right up here, just a little one. Just kind of move that around a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna fog a little bit of gold metallic spray over the top of this. I'm also gonna use some black spray paint in some sections and fracture it with the gold to create a fractured look, okay? All right. I'm gonna take some clear epoxy and I'm gonna rub these edges out so I don't have dry edges. See, it's really important here where I've done some color tones. It gives me some color on those edges automatically. So it's important that I get color over the edge, but because I've already pre-sprayed some spray paint and it gives me highs and lows on those edges, it's cheating and really setting me up to make this piece look real when I'm done. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go over where I dripped these black lines and I'm gonna move them with my paint stick so they don't look like paint dripped on the surface. It'll, it'll make them look more natural. Let's do that right now. I like that better. This blob I don't like so much so I'm gonna kind of spread that out a little bit. Make it look more organic. Okay, I got some ocean blue and some black metallic. We're gonna spray that on the surface here to give it some extra color. Let's do that. Okay, here we go. And I'm just pulling the trigger slow so it gives me some 
heavier dots here because I really want some interest here. And this ocean blue is pretty bright. It, it does a wild, wild job here. All right, let's use a little bit more clear. We're going to go in here where some of these spots are a little bit void. We're going to pour some of this out. We'll just make some clear spots. This is going to push epoxy and push stuff out of the way and create different effects as well. like the effect I'm getting there and look at what that metallic's done in that black see you see this is why layering is really really important okay we have our purple mountain metallic this is gonna give us some dark tones and this is gonna give a whole nother color that we haven't introduced yet so this will be another layer you don't need a lot of metallic powder to create a beautiful effect and I'm gonna show you exactly how this looks in clear how pretty that is can you see that mix that up really good so you don't get like tadpoles little chunks of uh, metallic in your piece and this mix is really nice so what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna outline some of this black with this purple to accentuate it let's start over here on this little piece and we'll just give us some purple around it to make it look like it's kind of part of that mineral Get a lot of purple kind of at this end here. Let's do some of that around this one too. It's really fun to layer like this. And even as that stick starts to lose some material, keep moving it. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Kind of bring in some of this purple here. See how I'm See, I'm going to drag that purple into this black and it'll kind of fade into that. It'll be like a gradient into there. Oh, this is looking cool. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour, I'm going to pour, uh, let's pour more black and I'll go right here with it and I'm going to pour purple right into it, right here. And then I'm going to mix the two with my hand. Just get a really neat neat effect going on here. Just kind of go this way with it too. Keeping everything too uniform. Okay, I'm going to give me some more purple in this. Do you like this purple, Chris? Yes, I, I've always liked that purple. You can see I'm going fast with that paint stick when I drag the fractures. That's a pro tip as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray, I like how this gold and purple are mixing, that looks really neat. So I'm going to spray some gold right here and then I'm going to pour some purple right on top of that and see what happens. Oh look at that, that's wild man. That's a cool section right there, see this little rounded section? Let's follow that with some purple. There we go. <laughs> That's cool, man. I'm gonna do some purple in this, in this black. Just adding more interest over that black. So it's not just big black dots. I'm gonna hit a little ocean blue right here. Ooh. That's cool, man. Oh, look at what it's doing right here. See those little, little faint lines, what they do? Little details. Okay, I'm just just doing short little spurts. And I'm just getting droplets hitting that metallic and reacting with the spray paint and creating a whole new look and layer. Now I'll come back again and I'm gonna add some more clear because I like these spots here that are, are not exactly the same. You know, it's, it's giving me some interest here. So I'm gonna do some blob here. Maybe I'll add a touch of black into that and then it'll be very transparent here. I'll mix that around. 
and I'll put some black kind of see-through black there. Yeah, I'm gonna put some more of that gold there and then uh, let me fog a little bit more gold over this whole thing. Good. I'm going to spray a little gold and then hit that with some more purple. I think I'll put one of those like right back here. There's a lot of gold here, so that'll make some sense. Now let's pour purple right into that. This really is a living material. It sure is. It just it makes a, a lot of a lot of change. That's going to evolve a lot. Let's let's spray a little ocean blue in that too. See how that makes it look even more real there. Let's try those same things with the metallic blue, that cobalt blue. Maybe we'll add a little purple to that. So let's put some of that, let's put a big section of that right here. That's just that cobalt blue sprayed directly in there. And then we're gonna bring some purple into that. <laughs> this is beautiful, I love doing these. They're almost like an agate or a geo that's in the piece. Oh yeah, that's money right there, huh? Let's fracture that with a little bit of gold metallic. Or here, we'll use black. Let's hit that with black, keep this dark. That looks nice. And then let's put some more purple over the top. I like that effect, so I'm gonna do more of those right now. I'm gonna do a real big section of that right here. I'm gonna take some more of that purple, drag it over all that. And then we're gonna hit that with the ocean blue. And then I'm gonna hit it with some of the black metallic. I'm gonna come back with quite a bit of purple over the top. So I'm gonna fog a little bit of blue over that just to see how that toned it down. It toned that gold down slightly. I'm gonna tone this gold down slightly. That looks, oh, look at that, see that? That looks real when you, because now I see through that blue into the gold down to the purple, it fractured it out. You got the alcohol that fractures it out. You got the black and the gold and the purple mixed together here. You got some of the movement coming this way. You got dots and crystals in this. Whew, this is amazing. I, lo <laughs> I love this piece. So many layers. Yes, that's what's important. That's key, Chris, right there is layers. Now I like that gold with some of this, some of this over it. So I gotta make more of that right here. Okay. And then we're gonna uh, just just make, make some purple in there. So I'm gonna hit it with some more blue and black um, alcohol spray. There's some ocean blue. There's some black on top. Okay, you know, I kinda I kinda got some blue into this black here, so let's fog a little black spray paint over that dark in that section back up. I like that. And then I don't like the dots on that section, so let's just bring some of that black to the top by rubbing that out. We'll bring some more purple over that. Chris, can you tell I'm having fun? Oh yeah, it's in your voice. It's This is Mike on fire. <laughs> Boy, look at how that's evolved. Golly, okay, I'm gonna take some of that blue metallic 
and fog this because I like that blue that's just on top a little bit. Oh, that's that's it right there. That's that's the look I'm going for. Is that? I mean, I got to do more of that over here because I like it even better. So I'm gonna fill the rest of this gold in with a little blue. And that's that's that opal. That's what I'm looking for. Almost an abalone, an abalone shell. So let's put more of that in here because I think that's that's money. That's what we're going for. That is awesome. Right? You'll see through into the gold. Let me take some, uh, let me take some of the sage. I'm just gonna introduce a little bit of sage into some of this black to give it some highlights. Not a lot, just a little bit. I know, you're thinking I'm crazy. Let's, let's see what happens here. And I'm gonna fog that with some more alcohol right there. Cool. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my clear and I want these highlights to really stand out. I want it to be the main focus of the whole piece. So that's what I'm gonna do from here. I'll open them up here and I'll bring it back here. So I'm gonna do that with my clear epoxy as my foundation. And that's what I'm gonna do is just make my highlighted section because I'm gonna add spray paint and it needs a medium to go ahead and, and meld for me. Now, whatever I do with this clear, it's gonna grow. So you gotta keep that in mind. I'm gonna run some clear veins right through this section to break some of this up. Still got some clear left if we want to make more of these sections I'm about to add, but this is going to be fun. And this will make this piece really almost glow. Whoa. And the reason I like putting it in clear is because it'll give you very natural looks in there because you're in clear. It's not, it's giving it a medium to flow through. If you just did the one color, it's going to look slightly fake. So let's, uh, add our other colors. I'll probably add some white to this too. This ocean mist is really a, a light light. It looks like ocean mist, ocean foam. You add that and then it really highlights this. See, I can always grow this further, but you can't shrink it once you add all these really bright colors. Okay, now I'm gonna add some black through there, just a little bit, or this is purple. We'll add a little purple, that's okay. Then we'll add some black over that. All right, let's torch that right now and then we'll see if we need to add more color. Without that clear epoxy laid down first, none of this would blow out for me and make that effect. Now, uh, this is a little too bright, so I'm gonna overlay it with a little bit of that metallic uh, spray paint because I really liked what that did over our gold. So let's see what it does over this. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. see, see how that gives you a layer, but it hides some of that brightness, 
but gives you almost your seeing into that and it blends everything together. Excellent. <laughs> that, that is so cool. Dang! Do you want to make one more section of that to make this thing make sense? Yes. Let's just extend it down here. Okay. You okay with that? Oh, sure. We're going to add a little bit of uh, clear on top of this to help that move. Let's do it in veins. Just like that. Put a little clear on top of this. And then we'll torch this out too. Okay, let's add some of this blue over the top and see if we can't blend that in. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Very nice. That's gonna look cool, man. Let's add a little bit more clear, just right here over this section to draw it together. Effects look much more natural when they run off the edge, don't they? Yes, good, good call, yes. Hard to know when to stop. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of navy just on like this one part to kind of fade this in a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like how that that made a less hard line going into that. That looks good. You can see how how gummy this is. So it's sitting in the cup for about two hours and we got this really really stringy almost like almost like you're, you got saltwater taffy yeah yeah I'm gonna create fractures all over this thing to really define it Get most of that off so I got smaller lines This is scary to do because you can mess your piece up, but I'm going for it, man.
as the epoxy gets to this stage in the curing time, it becomes very stringy. I heated it up in the cups because I wanted to almost wake it back up. I loosened it up a little bit, just enough to create these stringy, long, beautiful looking veins. This was a fun process to do. You can do this with any color and any style. Let's use some plastic to create a stone effect now. All right, I'm gonna test uh, putting some plastic over this and just see what happens. Kinda like that, man. Let's do it. <laughs> That's crazy, right? It, yeah. <laughs> Not gonna lie. That's kind of crazy. Uh. Whoa. So this has been sitting for like hours now. Because we waited late in the curing time, the pour is going to remain rough and bumpy. It won't have time to level back out. That's okay. When we do our next clear coat, it's going to overcome many of these highs and lows. We'll sand it and we'll get ready for that next clear coat after this dries. All right, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I think so. We're gonna change this project up a little bit. This is a special color. We're going all out. So we're gonna sand with 220 grit. We're gonna create a mechanical bond by doing this. Then on this next coat, we're gonna apply some color. We're gonna use our stone coat countertop ocean blue metallic mixed with alcohol and we'll spritz and spray this in the clear coat. This is gonna give us an iridescent effect. We're gonna skip trial this to make it look very natural and then we'll do our final clear coat. Let's get started. Again, on this coat, we're going to use three ounces per square foot. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. We'll use a drill to mix that up and we'll apply this using our square notch trowel. Then we'll chop that, we'll torch it, and we're ready to spritz our ocean blue and skip trowel that across the surface. After we trowel an even coat of our stone coat countertop epoxy across the surface, we'll remove the loose bristles from our chop brush and we'll chop the surface out. This will help to mix the material a second time as well as remove any lines from that notch trowel. Then we'll address the edges with the same chop brush in long horizontal strokes. This helps get those edges smooth and they're not so smooth at this point because of all the late effects that we did. Don't worry, we're gonna get them great. Stay tuned, this project is awesome. So, I'm gonna take our Ocean Blue Fine Mist spray bottle, I'm gonna mist the top of this, and then I'll just skip trowel over it to give it some organic movement, all right? Let's do that right now, uh, see what this looks like. Okay, there's quite a bit of Ocean Blue there on top. I'm gonna just get something and trowel it out there. Okay, I'm gonna use our little Bondo spreader and just skip trowel over this surface. I 
I was thrilled from the results of this technique. I love how it came out. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Depending on the angle that you look at this project will show more or less of this translucent effect. It was amazing. That's cool, man. I like that. That gave it that iridescent look over the top. All right, we'll see how well this lays out. I like it, man. After that second coat was dry, we're going to really prepare this project for the final flood coat. We do this with the same random orbital sander with 220 grit. We're going to address the edges. We're going to get rid of any of the remaining high points or drips. This will set us up for a very good final project by making the edges smooth. After the edges are complete, as well as the round over, we're going to use that same sander and address the top. We'll get this nice and flat so there isn't a bunch of high and low points, and the final coat will lay out like a sheet of glass. Okay guys, the reason we did a heavy sand between coats is because we did effects on the previous coats that were really late in the pour. This doesn't give it an opportunity to level out really, really flat because we came in late and that made this project outstanding because of those late effects. But now we're just getting rid of those high points. We're gonna get that nice and flat. We'll sand it to 220 grit. We'll apply our final coat and this project's gonna look amazing. Let's do it. After we've finished sanding the surface, we'll remove the dust with compressed air, then we'll wipe our project with 91% isopropyl alcohol. This will remove the remaining portions of dust and we're ready to do our final flood coat. It also really shows you what the project's going to look like with that final coat. Beautiful. Let's go pour the final coat right now. We're going to mix up our normal stone coat countertop epoxy at three ounces per square foot using our drill. Be sure that your battery is charged. Then we're gonna spread that on the surface using our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. Just like before, we'll use our chop brush to remove those trowel lines. We'll chop the surface. We'll torch it three times to remove all the air. Then step back and admire your finished masterpiece. What we hope that we were able to portray by making this video is to use color, use technique, have fun, try new things, and you can really see the results of your imagination coming to fruition. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com to see all the products used in this video. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Hey, visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon.